China has revealed its prototype for a new high-speed maglev train that is capable of reaching speeds of 620 km per hour. These super-fast trains are specially engineered to make transportation fast and easy. Hey people, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we'll be talking all about the new maglev train China is about to implement. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Done, let's get started. China is home to the world's largest high-speed rail network, which stretches over 37,000 kilometers and the fastest commercially operating train, the Shanghai Maglev. It was the country's first high-speed Maglev train and began operating in 2003, running at a top speed of 431 kilometers per hour. The train links Shanghai Pudong Airport and Longyang Road in the eastern side of Shanghai. China has been eager to make further infrastructure improvements ahead of the 2022 Winter Olympics, which will take place in Beijing. But before we dive more into it, let's look at maglevs in general. Maglev is a term coined for magnetic levitation. It is a system of train transportation that uses two sets of magnets, one set to repel and push the train up off the track, and another set to move the elevated train ahead, taking advantage of the lack of friction. Along certain medium-range routes, maglev can compete well with high-speed rail and airplanes. With this technology, the train travels along a path of magnets which control the train's stability and speed. While the propulsion and levitation require no moving parts, the bogies can move in relation to the main body of the vehicle and some technologies require support by retraceable wheels at speeds under 150 km per hour. This compares with electric multiple units they may have several dozen parts per bogey. Maglev trains can therefore in some cases be quieter and smoother than conventional trains and have the potential for much higher speeds. These vehicles have set numerous speed records and maglev trains can accelerate and decelerate much faster than conventional trains. The only practical limitation is the safety and comfort of the passengers. Although wind resistance at very high speeds can cause running costs that are 4-5 to five times that of conventional high-speed rail like the Tokaido Shinkansen, the power needed for levitation is typically not a large percentage of the overall energy consumption of the high-speed maglev system. Overcoming drag, which makes all land transport more energy intensive at higher speeds, takes the most energy. VAC train technology has been proposed as a means to overcome this limitation. Maglev systems have been much more expensive to construct than conventional train systems, although the simpler construction of maglev vehicles makes them cheaper to manufacture and maintain. The Shanghai Maglev train, also known as the Shanghai Trans Rapid, has a top speed of 430 km per hour. This line is the fastest operational high-speed maglev train designed to connect Shanghai Pudong International Airport and the outskirts of central Pudong. Shanghai as mentioned earlier. This is the first time the launch generated wide public interest and media attention, propelling the population of the mode of transportation. Despite over a century of research and development, maglev transport systems are now operational in just three countries namely Japan, South Korea, and China. The incremental benefits of maglev technology have often been considered hard to validate against cost and risk, especially where there is an existing or proposed conventional high-speed train line with spare passenger carrying capacity, as in high-speed rail in Europe, the high-speed 2 in the UK, and Shinkansen in Japan. In the public imagination, maglev often brings up the concept of an elevated monorail track with a linear motor. Maglev systems may be monorail or dual rail. The SC Maglev MLX01, for instance, uses a trench-like track and also not all monorail trains are maglevs. Some railway transport systems incorporate linear motors but use electromagnetism only for propulsion without levitating the vehicle. Such trains have wheels and are not maglevs. Maglev tracks, monorail or not, can also be constructed at grade or underground in tunnels. Conversely, non-maglev tracks, monorail or not, can be elevated or underground too. Some maglev trains do incorporate wheels and function like linear motor-propelled wheel vehicles at slower speeds but levitated higher speeds. This is actually the case with, with electrodynamic suspension maglev trains. Aerodynamic factors may also play a role in the levitation of such trains. In electromagnetic suspension systems, the train levitates above a steel rail while electromagnets attached to the train are oriented toward the rail from below. The system is typically arranged on a series of C-shaped arms with the upper portion of the arm attached to the vehicle and the lower inside edge containing the magnets. The rail is situated inside the C between the upper and lower edges. 
Magnetic attraction varies inversely with the square of distance, so minor changes in distance between the magnets and the rail produce greatly varying forces. These changes in force are dynamically unstable. A slight divergence from the optimum position tends to grow, requiring sophisticated feedback systems to maintain a constant distance from the track, approximately 15 millimeters. The major advantage to suspended maglev systems is that they work at all speeds, unlike electrodynamic systems which only work at a minimum speed of around 30 km per hour. This eliminates the need for a separate low-speed suspension system and can simplify track layout. On the downside, the dynamic instability demands fine track tolerances, which can offset this advantage. Eric Lathwaite, the father of maglev was concerned that to meet required tolerances, the gap between magnets and rail would have to be increased to the point where the magnets would be unreasonably large. In practice, this problem was addressed through improved feedback systems which support the required tolerances. Before we move on to the next kind of suspension, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Done already? Cool. The other kind of suspension is in electrodynamic suspension, both the guideway and the train exert a magnetic field and the train is levitated by the repulsive and attractive force between these magnetic fields. In some configurations, the train can be levitated only by repulsive force. In the early stages of maglev development, at the Miyazaki test track, a purely repulsive system was used instead of the later repulsive and attractive EDS system. The magnetic field is produced either by superconducting magnets, as in the JR maglev, or by an array of permanent magnets, as in induct track. The repulsive and attractive force in the track is created by an induced magnetic field in wires or other conducting strips in the track. A major advantage of EDS maglev systems is that they are dynamically stable, which means changes in distance between the track and the magnets create strong forces to return the system to its original position. In addition, the attractive force varies in the opposite manner, providing the same adjustment effects. No active feedback control is needed, however at slow speeds, the current induced in these coils and the resultant magnetic flux is not large enough to levitate the train. For this reason, the train must have wheels or some other form of landing gear to support the train until it reaches takeoff speed. Since the train may stop at any location due to equipment problems for instance, the entire track must be able to support both low and high speed operation. The word maglev refers not only to vehicles but to the railway systems as well, specifically designed for magnetic levitation and propulsion. All operational implementations of maglev technology make minimal use of wheeled train technology and are not compatible with conventional rail tracks. Because they can't share existing infrastructure, maglev systems must be designed as standalone systems. The SPM maglev system is interoperable with steel rail tracks and would permit maglev vehicles and conventional trains to operate on the same tracks. MAN in Germany also designed a maglev system that worked with conventional rails, but it was never fully developed. Now coming to the most recent prototype of China, this particular prototype runs on high temperature superconducting power according to the South China Morning Post. The superconducting state occurs where electrical resistance approaches zero when cooled to a very low temperature and is key in making faster and more efficient maglev trains. The HTS technology allows the train to float without the use of electricity and move so easily a person can push it with their hand. Researchers told the local media that there are still issues to iron out before the new technology becomes commercially viable, but a production model could be here within six years. That would put China right on par with Japan. Japan is currently building a 314 mile per hour maglev line between Tokyo and Nagoya that is due to roll out in 2027. With the world's fastest land transport system, China is now the pioneer in the transport sector with highly advanced maglev technology. With that, we come to the end of the video. Let us know what part of the video you love the most in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. Also, drop a like if you found the video interesting and stay tuned for more informative videos. See you soon. Until then, bye.